Here we go. Now, <laughs> my plans have completely gone to shit. Um, set off an hour that I was meant to do. So I got up here about seven o'clock, realized that the Penna Pass was pre-booking only, stinker. So in a panic, I decided to take the Watkin path up to Snowden. It's a four mile path and has the most amount of elevation gain of any of the seven paths. So I'm not sure why I've chosen this one, bit of a panic. But yeah, decided to leave the tent at home, take the bivvy, save a bit of weight. It's gonna be a power walk. See if I can get high enough to get some good views for sunset before an early morning push onto Snowden. So let's crack on. Sweet Mary Joseph and the wee donkey, it's warm. Ah, oh, there's no clouds, but there's no wind. And because I'm power walking, getting a shift on, I'm sweating like crazy. So I'm gonna have to see how quick dry this t-shirt from Fern is. But so far, so good. Feeling really good, actually. Um, I don't know how far in I am, but we've got here Aaron, which is 2,450 feet behind me last light. And there's Snowden. So, initial plan was to bivvy on the saddle between Snowden and Ishluith, uh, looking over Clint Clidor. So, see how we're going for time. I think I'll definitely catch it because I'm going quite well, but if I'm feeling good, I might push on up to Snowden. Won't make sunset, but it'll be nice to wake up for sunrise. So it's quarter past nine, hour and a half in, and I made it to the saddle between Ishluid and Snowden. And look at this view. You've got Clinclidor, Molshabod, well wild camped a couple of months back. You can find that here. Oh, and Crib Gorch. Stunning. This light is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, right. I'm going to bung the drone up and then find somewhere to bivvy. Decided to go for it, head up Snowden, 
bivvy up there. Just thought I'm not gonna do anything else. And I'd rather get sweaty now than get sweaty in the morning and have to pack all my stuff up and climb up to the summit. So up we go, I've got this bastard, bastard scree to take in now. Cheeky defibrillator, could have used that earlier when I was about half an hour into the walking path. Savage. Summit at Snowden, 10.30, so two hours 45. That was with a massive 40 minute stop on the saddle when I was pissing around with the drone and uh, deliberating whether to come up here or not. But I'm glad I did. Lovely post-apocalyptic glow. Didn't enjoy that last section of the walking path though. Absolutely rancid. Right, time to settle down, put some clothes on, have some ramen, I'll find a place to bivvy. It's 5.30 a.m. Um, just got up to watch the sunrise. Absolutely beautiful, but there's so many people. Uh, must have been like 50, 60 people on the summit, which is uh, standard for Snowden, but sleep went quite well, surprisingly. Uh, bivvy next to the cafe. Um, yeah, got a good four hours sleep, I reckon. A bit chilly on the face at times, but yeah, pretty happy with that. Look at these views though. Absolutely stunning. Time to get down back to the van and on to Cader Idris. Let's go. Back down at the van after summit in Snowden, 7.45 a.m. So just exactly 12 hours. So I'm not breaking any records today, but yeah, pretty pretty awesome uh, bivvy at the top and sunrise is pretty impressive. The walking path, really tranquil to start off with, but that final push to the summit from the saddle between Nidlewith and Snowden is absolutely horrible. Um, loose, really steep, bits of rock, bare rock, really not nice. So I didn't enjoy that section. On the way back down though, uh, really tranquil, really peaceful. Uh, stopped off at the Watkin Pools. Uh, these really beautiful, uh, crystal clear plunge pools. Had a little bit of a freshen up. Uh, it was sensationally cold, I'm not gonna lie, but it's uh, left me feeling invigorated. So. Going to make the short one hour drive to Cader Idris, try and pick up some breakfast on the way, but feeling good. Onwards, onwards we go. So I've made the short drive from Snowdon to the base of Cader Idris. En route I stopped at Snowdonia's answer to Chernobyl, uh, Trousfunneth, uh, and had some breakfast there. 
ate far too much but it was delicious so refueled and alongside that dip I'm feeling refreshed so ready to go. There's uh, three routes to the top of Kader Idris, uh, two from the north and one from the south, that's the Minford. Uh, I've done that before, you can find that vlog here, but today I'm tackling one of the two from the north and heading up the Fox's Path, which is the shortest, although it does involve tackling a rather steep scree slope, so that'll be interesting. It's 10 o'clock, um, so plenty of time. I've just parked outside of Tinant Car Park, that's where the hike starts, so let's get cracking. So in my haste, leaving the car park, I found myself on the pony path instead of the fox's path. I thought I could link them up, but the path didn't look very good. So I just decided to stick on the pony path, which is arguably the easiest one up. It's about four and a half kilometers, just over 700 meters of elevation gain. About halfway in, um, 45 minutes, feeling good. Energy levels are high, yeah. Sweet. Last push up to Cadder, and then I'll try and come down the fox's path. Mix it up. So nearly at the summit, hour and ten minutes in. Short little push, but down below me. Slindergada and the Fox's Path. You can see it going up that steep scree slope. So I'm gonna try and go down that, but feeling good. It's gone humid, it's gone quite cloudy. Very moist, very moist. But uh, that breakfast is repeating on me, honestly. So we made it up to the summit of Kader Idris, peak number two. Took me just under an hour and a half, was three miles in length. I followed the pony path, really straightforward. Not that difficult. Steep in sections, a bit of loose scree, but uh, nothing too tricky compared to Snowdon. Stunning views though, uh, it's cloudy, but uh, excellent visibility. Uh, we've got Barmouth and the estuary, the Llyn, Snowdonia. And if you spin it round, you've got the Cambrians and the Brecon Beacons where I'm headed next. Summit's quite busy, um, but 893 metres high. Translation is Idris's chair and the Welsh is Penagada. Stunning mountain, uh, shrouded in myth and legend. Apparently if you sleep on the mountain, you either wake up a madman or a poet. And some say the, the lakes are bottomless. And on that, I'm gonna head down. So I've come up via the pony. I'm gonna go down via the foxes, which is loose scree. So down to Klinagada and back to the car. Two down, one to go.
back down at the van after finishing the hike. All in all, it took me exactly three hours and was five and a half miles. Now I went up the, the pony path, but I came down the fox's path. Um, halfway down the fox's path, I found a river and I just detoured and beelined it straight back to the car park through some farmer's fields. That was interesting, but a bit more varied. All in all, great hike again. I love Cader Idris. It's a bit quieter than Snowdon. It's still quite busy today, but again, you get sensational views from the summit. What I will say is having done all three paths now, uh, don't do the Fox's path. It was pretty horrible. The scree was rank. Um, the path is quite tricky underfoot and you have to concentrate. Um, if you're gonna pick one, I go for the Minford path from the south. Uh, that's the most beautiful. Uh, and the easiest is the pony path. So those would be my recommendations. Two out of three done. It is now quarter past one. Uh, I need to make haste and make the two hour drive south to Penavan. Lunch and coffee on the way. Let's go. So halfway between Canada Idris and Penavan, I've stopped for a, a well-earned coffee from McDonald's. Uh, not gonna lie, I did have a <laughs> wrap of the day as well. But while I'm on the subject of food and drink, I thought I'd talk about how I've been fueling for this challenge. Now, there's no one size fits all. I'm not a nutritionist. Everybody is different. Uh, but for me, I like to have a big meal uh, between each of the hikes uh, and before I set off on the first one. And then when I'm on these hikes, it's a case of uh, calories in versus calories out. You're literally just trying to fuel your body. So I'm just trying to eat not as much as I can, but just trying to keep my body fueled the, the, for the entire duration. Trying to eat something every 60 to 90 minutes, two, 300 calories. Um, again, it's a mixture of foods, uh, varied um, substances. So sugary snacks, you know, the classic uh, chocolate, Haribo, but I don't want to rely on these just in case I go for a crash. So I've got other things, uh, fruit, bananas, uh, big fan of the Cliff bars and fulfill nutrition bars uh, and the good old fashioned uh, Welsh cake full of calories then but yeah varied source don't want to rely on sugars uh, one other thing that I'm using um, is these electrolyte tablets now I don't like drinking calories a lot of people have Lucozade and stuff that's all good and well but throughout the day I'm going to lose a lot of salts so these are great for replacing them and stopping cramps so I'd recommend these I've been dropping these in my water every so often but yeah that's a little chat about nutrition uh like i said i'm not a nutritionist there's no one size fits all so it's completely up to you and what you find palatable but i recommend eating something every sort of 60 to 90 minutes little and often right one final push before we get to pedivan Number three, kind of van, done and dusted. One hour 20, um, 886 meters kind of van, seven miles shorter than kind of address. But boy, the views are incredible. Again, clear visibility, panoramic views. And I love that the light is just breaking through. 
and scouting over the peaks. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. I'm going to stick the drone up, show what it looks like from the sky. It is now just gone six o'clock, so I've got an hour and a half to get back down and complete it within 24 hours. But my well, energy levels are good. I am buzzing. What a day. Snowden feels like so long ago. Uh, back at the van after completing the Three Peaks Challenge. Pair of van took me two hours, 20 minutes, and it was five miles in total. Really, really lucky, zero crowds up there. Was a bit of wind uh, and my Rode Wireless Go died, so apologies if the audio is pretty poor on my GoPro. Uh, but yeah, completed the Three Peaks in 23 hours, 15 minutes. Uh, so 45 minutes to spare, but I never set out to break any records. I think the record's something stupid, like seven hours, 40 minutes. But, you know, from the outset, for, this is all about experience for me and just be able to enjoy it. And now I can look back on it and not only say that I've done it, but I've had a pretty epic time doing it. Uh, being able to bivy up on Snowdon, sunrise, and be able to take the uh, longer routes up Penavan instead of the motorway, just makes it all worth it. And that's what it's all about, you know? Yeah, loads of people have done this, but to say you've done it, done it properly and enjoyed it, I think that's the that's the main thing. Uh, advice for anyone doing it, I would say uh, pretty obvious, but save it for a good day. Um, do it with someone else if you can. Uh, that way you can split the driving up uh, and one can nap or eat while the other one drives uh, and fuel up, eat little and often because uh, you don't want to crash and burn. That'll help with enjoyment. For me, reflecting on it, if I was to do it again, uh, I'd probably do it in reverse. The uh, hardest part for me was probably the drive between Catteridge and, and Pedavan. I think it was the uh, four hours sleep in the bivy bag, but that really caught up with me. And uh, yeah, it was real deep lull, struggling there, but uh, picked back up when I got to Pedavan. Uh, yeah, I do it in reverse. So get that drive out of the way first and, and finish at Snowden, which is arguably the best, uh, the best view of them all. But yeah, incredible, incredible uh, hike. I already recommend it and uh, it seems like flipping longer than 24 hours, but <laughs> smashed it. I'd like to also say a big thank you to Fern. Uh, they sent me a load of kit uh, to try out and I've worn most of it during this, uh, this challenge. It's really good gear. I uh, absolutely love the quality and it's super sustainable. So check them out. Uh, yeah, love it. Anyway, I hope you find this useful uh, or interesting or just visually pleasing. Uh, if you did, chuck us a like, comment or subscribe if you're feeling super generous. Until next time, Diochenbao.